Okay, welcome back to Case Closed Anime Review Episode 2. Now it's 185. This now this is gonna be the first of two episodes in a row I'm doing today because I'm gonna do one right after my next comic corner. Yes, I have like a few other ones I can do. Okay, now this episode I am discussing Episode 1073, Detective Boy's Pursuit of the Purse Snatcher. Yeah, this is a pretty simple episode. <clears throat> Excuse me. So with Ayami in a shopping center, what well, looks like a, like a shopping district, just look around by herself. I should point out that, that, that this girl is eight years old and she's by herself. Just bowing everybody because it's Japanese tradition. Just like everybody. And then she's somebody running with a purse. Like, what the heck is going on here? And then we see the older gentleman he's there yelling, Thief! And because he's old, it's real, he's 68. Yes, 68 years old. And apparently, this thief has stolen 300,000 yen. He just took out the bank and basically took off with it. Who is this thief, you might ask? Oh, there's a bunch of twists and turns. This one, it feels as though this one kept changing its mind, what type of story it is. So... Basically, he contacts the police. I'm a contact the boys, which, yes, we have another Amaranth episode. By the way, remember that, that the Hybra is part of the group. Yes, and she takes part of the freaking story. Excuse me. Because <laughs> it seems like, though, a lot of the time we do these Amaranth episodes, they forget she's part of the freaking cast. It's like they forget she's even there. Thank you for remembering. So, of course, Tagagi just happily in the area. He was getting information on something, and of course, he happily is running. Now, what was information she was looking for? By the end of the episode, never revealed. I'm not kidding about that. They never bothered to reveal this. Like, oh, he was gathering information. For what? Was it for a case? Was it for a date with his girlfriend Sato? Never revealed. It's like that's that's a plot point that's dropped. And of course it's like, oh, they mentioned, oh, we have a dead body in our apartment. Oh, but this guy had long hair. And the red guy, oh, this guy broke a leg. Like, this guy couldn't be it because he had a broken leg. And of course, he was found stabbed in the back of his apartment. The guy, uh, apparently the theory is the guy broke it because he had an appointment with the guy. And then, and then while they're like, oh, we got another phone call. We have another dead body at, at a closed restaurant. No joke. They have a dead body there. And it's a guy died via poisoning. And thanks to, like, oh, it seems like two coincidences on the handwriting is very poor when it comes to the suicide note. Like, oh, they just happened to find the 300,000 yen, no problem. Even Conan realizes, though, that. Well, here's the problem. This case was too easy. Yeah, this case all way, is like closed way too easily. And there's also revealed those time conservancies. Because time conservancies uh, basically is inconsistent. Where it turns out the guy who died via poisoning, the second victim, was actually the first victim. And the guy who was stabbed, he was actually the second victim. Of course, show detective boys like running around, like running through the apartment building. Excuse me, went there aside and they go into an abandoned house. Yes, this house looks like a Japanese, like a small Japanese mansion. Here's a question Who the heck does this belong to? Did the person who lived here, like, yeah, that's a big question when it comes to this house. They don't really say who it belongs to, it just says abandoned. It looked like, it looked like a condemned house. And then, oh, oh, look, a freshly made mound. They dig it up like, oh, there's the, there's the red coat. And apparently, and it's also revealed that the purse snatcher had a mask on. Yes, because maybe the thing got cold. <laughs> no, it has nothing to do with COVID stuff. So, yeah, it turns out that the person responsible for these two deaths and the so-called purse snatching was the person that's the victim all along. The reason why 
Because, and of course, as it relates to why he moved away from another, another section of Tokyo. Because these two guys are kind of it. They're basically blackmailers who blackmailed this woman to commit suicide. He wanted revenge. So he killed both of them. Go points out that what he did was wrong. Not justice, he, what he did was wrong. And the guy just immediately arrested, just turned himself in, no problem. And, oh yeah, it's revealed why Ayami was there at the start. The reason why that she was there was because she found something that Genta was looking for. More eel stuff. Yep. And that's the episode. A pretty straightforward episode. It just felt like, though, like it took, it was like, it felt too easy. And one thing that I don't think anybody did notice, though, is that the purse snatcher and the guy who was the victim are the same exact height. Yeah, and the guy who they thought was purse snatcher, the guy's shorter. Yeah, that could easily just pull it like, easily. So easily say, hey, why in the world do we have a purse snatcher and a, and a victim being the same exact height? And, and it's showing that he's able to run, no problem. So apparently he's, he's got some cardio for being a guy who's 68 years old. So yeah, this is kind of weird. Yeah, I do like the episode, though. Alright, now we're going to discuss... Three full chapters. And you're probably thinking, is this a complete story arc? No, it is not because it's still going. I'm like, wow. We actually have a story arc for Case Closed. That's more than three freaking chapters. Hooray. First time in three, four years this has happened. Good God almighty. I think the last one was about this long was the... FPS Zero Case. That was six freaking chapters. Six. So, yeah. And by the way, the whole thing is basically a flashback. Well, throughout the three chapters. So, the superintendent reveals, though, that about what happened 17 years prior. When he was 33. So, let me think. 17 years. It means he's 50. Yeah, 50 years old. So, they explain he came to the U.S. meeting up with this woman. Apparently he didn't see her. Amanda Hughes. Yeah, this mysterious old lady and this younger woman. By the way, this old lady is 81. If this woman was still around, she would have been like... Like, in her, like pushing 100 years old. And this woman, Rachel, who's 20, it means currently she would be 37. But here's the strange thing about this woman. I mean, if you look at her face, it looks like wasabi. Yeah, if you take a fact that, oh, because she's 20 here, and wasabi is like 38, this could be wasabi. Yes, I think this is her. In a flashback. Yes. You want how I can tell it's her? The same face. Yep, so that is a meeting with. <laughs> oh gosh, the crush is crying. Goes, go get a cab. And meanwhile, though, we see Rum with Corn, and I don't remember the other guy's name. The two snipers work with a black organization. And then we see, oh yeah, his eye. And here's the strange thing about his eye he's got a fake eye on him where he can do this. And just see exactly what the heck is going on. So like, oh, like find this other stuff. By the way, Rum is the if you don't know anything about this guy, he is the second command of the Black Organization, and he's a serious version of Colonel Sebastian Moran. You're probably thinking, who the heck is that guy? You might ask. Well, he is from Sherlock Holmes, and it's explained by Conan, and this is certainly true. Colonel Sebastian Moran was the unseen second command behind Professor James Moriarty. Yep, that is completely 100% true. Basically, the creator of the series based this character on that particular character. As a matter of fact, the leader of the Black Organization is based upon Professor James Moriarty. This is why Cohen takes a lot of inspiration from Sherlock Holmes. Being a Sherlock Holmes fan. So yeah, real inside the cases is just this... Uh, Guy who was shocked. (laughs) 
where like, these people who are shocked uh, come out of the elevator for attention and of course then Rum basically decides to pay her a visit and then we see this guy get taken out really easily yeah apparently the superintendent apparently knew about the black organization well before anybody else ever did and of course the chapter chapter 1006 and what's called the shot by devil we have taken out two members of the black organization and then we then we jump to chapter 1007 the watchtower bishop which have Conan imitating rum so Conan basically details the fact that oh about the meeting that he's supposed to have with her and then of course talks to uh, basically a a clerk who doesn't know anything about like this gang exactly to tell him because well can't exactly this could be the fact that they want to reveal any client in these details and we have Ron meeting with this woman Amanda and talk about the fact that the her bodyguard is a daughter of somebody who took a bullet for her and then she's forced to basically give him the poison and she didn't exactly give exactly what, what they wanted. So yeah, take the poison. And of course she's upset. And then of course they and then of course she runs out. And of course she hides. And then she runs into the famous Shogi Master who got killed in the same time period. Yep. Taiji, who is well, Aki's brother's fake brother, who took his name when he became a, a, a Shogi Master. He is like very. He's like, uh, what do you want? Yep, and they apparently want to see a woman. Apparently, it's like, nope, go away. And then, of course, basically, got to keep her protected. Like, he's too best he can. You just really want to protect her because probably gonna think she's hot. Then, of course, she hits her with a taser. Yes, tasers are apparently very popular in this particular arc. Yeah, first thing, the black or his age take out three people with a taser, and and now we have the shogi master taking out this one with a taser. Then he takes some books out from behind a bookshelf and places her behind the books. I'm like, that's ingenious. Excuse me. And then we see more hints. This is this is basically Wasabi in present day with her given a shogi piece. The very same shogi piece seen back in the far mark. Yes, the same one. So, of course, he basically contacts... Like, and of course, Rom basically just visits the guy again. Like, oh, and of course, like, then he mentions the name Kasami Rina, who is apparently Rum. Yeah, apparently, this guy, Rum. And of course, they get a phone call. The guy, Belba, walks in. And apparently, they find Amanda possibly dead. Oh, she's unconscious. I call the police. And then you see something we do see in present day, where you see a bishop with a watcher on it. And then, of course, while well, we see two members of Black Wings taking, being guarded outside, while well, the Shogi Masters have the, basically the crap being out of him by being kicked a lot. Like, nope, he's not going to deliver, so basically they give her the same point. He gave him the same poison. And, of course, basically, like, tells the bubble, like, hey, I'm serious, manager, she's dead. He's like, give me Hana room number. So we can't do that. He's the Grand Master of the, of Shogi in Japan. If anything happens, I'll make you pay for it. Wow. <laughs> Shows the fact this guy's got freaking balls on him. Yes. They move on to a chapter 1000, which is not the conclusion arc. Yes, seriously. If intertwining thoughts like peace coming together. Yeah, and of course you have Rum telling him, don't, don't take your eye off, the, off them. And then we see apparently him dying because he was forced to take the poison. And then he, and of course he, the, the, the future inspector like, oh, can have a guy step out of the room, wife's fingerprints. And he says, I didn't know Honda Han, Han had a friend like you. And then of course he takes out his gun, smacks him. <laughs> yes, he smacks him. <laughs> and of course... Well, he sees him dying. Though apparently he sees, like, put on mascara. Like, hmm. And then, of course, he finds the, the bodyguard. And, of course, basically, she proceeds to try to fight him. 
but it's like mm-hmm. and she, she, she's basically picturing his phone about what happened to Amanda then he just karate chops back and knock her unconscious and he takes her out via car and of course they, they eventually find oh yeah she was definitely there all along and of course they try to find out where he is and of course he's hides her in a freaking suitcase and like they come through and Rem look glance and like hmm Mr. Earl turns out she was here all along and the guy's dead. Then, of course, they proceed to catch up with him and point a gun at him with a passion. And it's like, like, pull over, dude. You can have a woman we want. Yeah, and then, of course, he pees around the way. They smash by a freaking semi truck. Like, what? An explosion happening. Like, okay, two minute logos. Time to go. Yep, and, of course, then he asked basically the woman, the passenger seat. Is she right? He was like, what? She must have run away. <laughs> yep and he says after that was a coma uh, at a police hostel for about 10 years when I woke up I found myself looking like this I was accused of murder initially but I was cleared of suspicion thanks to the testimony of the bellboy who was looking when I discovered Amanda's body on top of that I had scheduled a meeting with Amanda too was it the same with traffic house? yeah it seems the truck driver crashes me ran a red light while I was driving under the influence by the way, of all Amanda's bodyguards were knocked up by somebody. When they were in contest, they found themselves in a hotel storage room. All except Uska, who you kept taking with you. That's, yes. So you figured it out. The dying message left behind. Yeah, almost. And then we cut back down to downstairs. We're like, Conan kind of late. And it was the guy's like, it's been nearly 40 minutes. Why are we talking with Super Saiyan for so long? And then we see Wasabi. Like, I don't know what Saka's going to manage to get the cab yet. Hope she's never been drinking. And we see her just standing there. It's, the chapter has a sharp glare. The rain continues to pour. Ooh. Maybe she knows Ram. Maybe she recognizes Ram. Because I think this woman is that bodyguard from the flashback. Yeah. Three really good chapters. Excellent. And fantastic job on the part. In fact, we have an arc that's more than three chapters. Looks like it's going to be seven, maybe even nine chapters. Like, wow. It's been a long freaking time we actually had an arc this long. And thank you for finally doing this, writer. Yep. But yeah, that's particularly the talk about this episode because it's really good here. Yep. So next up, Comic Corner. Now it's the next episode. Case closed. Okay, next video. Bye.